section 18 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the town council is being conducted via, via hybrid remote participation only. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted in the council chambers and every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to view this meeting while in progress may do so by watching Southbridge Cable Access Channel 192 or by the remote information noted below. We will post a record of this meeting on the town's website at www.ci.southbridge.mass.us as soon as we are able. A roll call vote is required for all votes taken under this order. Agenda item number one, call to order. Uh, Councillor Marchetti, I'm here. Uh, Councillor Dow? Present. Councillor Steves? Present. Councillor Steves is on remote. Yep, Citizen member Can Sherry Bemis? And Citizen Member Stephen Lazo. I also see that uh, DPW Director Heather Blakely is on the call. Uh, Chairman Jack Jovan is on the call. Councilor Dave Adams is also on the call. I don't know who CO is. Is that, uh, there's someone CO on there. I don't know who that is. It's cut off on the screen. They want to identify themselves. Um, all right, we'll move on. Is it me, uh, Mike? Who? Right. Doing a test. Is it? Is my light up when I talk, Councilor Adams? All right. I can hear you. You might need to move up the screen a little bit there. They can see the name on the bottom. Uh, Chair, um, Town Manager Michael McCall has already is also on on the phone. Agenda item number two, uh, three, consider the approve and approve the joint DPW Town Council meeting minutes of March second, twenty twenty one. The councilors have a chance to look it over. I did. I'll make a motion that we reckon, that we approve um, with a couple of minor amendments. Uh, Councilor Steves? Um, yeah. Um, under item number seven, uh, there's a CNA that should be can. And under number 11, paragraph two, it starts with Councilor Danielle. But the rest of his spelling is correct. Um, other than that, I didn't see anything else. So. Okay, duly noted. Councilor Dow, if you wanted to look it over for a couple of seconds. Fine. I didn't have it in my packet, so. Yeah, I noticed. But I think I think Council uh, Guess he do a good job. <laughs> so I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm good. All right. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as amended, Councilor Dow. Yes. Councilor Steves. Yes. And I'm yes. Thank you. Agenda item number four, discuss a transfer request from project number 67900, landfill royalties to account number 003499.589900.9127, special appropriations, catch basin, and street sweeping disposal in the amount of $75,000 for catch basin and street sweeping debris disposal. Entertain a motion to recommend to council to council Special for moves. approval. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, town manager or Heather, you'd like to speak to this? Uh, I will defer momentarily to Ms. Blakely. Um, they came to me, when I say they, I, I would say Heather Blakely, our DPW director, and Ms. Harnoy has brought to my attention that um, we have accumulated sweeping debris for approximately three years since the agreement was reached with uh, Casella for the closure of the landfill. Um, 
I received further information from Ms. Blakely that the seller was refusing to take our street sweepings, and so we've accumulated them to date, and I have submitted a question to our council and helped reach that 2018 uh, settlement agreement why they couldn't be taking them. Uh, I, I don't have the entire agreement. I have the core of the agreement, not all the exhibits, but my take is I don't know why we shouldn't be able to have them somehow accommodated. Uh, that only came up in the last couple of days, but we do need to figure out a solution for these sweepings. I, I had only posed the question in part from some of the discussion last night. I did a further read. Uh, it was mentioned last night. That I think it was you, Councilor Marchetti, asked, you know, shouldn't they be taking them under that agreement? I did look at the agreement this morning and I did pose the question to Council. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have an answer in the next day or so. But for right now, we have to do something with these sweepings. Uh, whether we can get the money back from Casella, that, that's a separate issue. But I understand from Ms. Blakely that we cannot just leave these accumulated sweepings where they are. All right, thank you. And from there, I'll defer to Ms. Blakely. Heather? Well, yep. Uh, so we have been accumulating sweepings as a town manager, as stated. Um, we store them right now down at the wastewater treatment plant um, in the back where we have some files. Um, this has become a problem. We're running out of storage space. Um, we have requested multiple times through Casella and through the Board of Health that we try to make an agreement for disposal of these sweepings. They, as Casella said, since they closed the landfill here, there is no way for them to manage to take them um, at no cost to the town. So we have proceeded with getting quotes for disposal of the sweepings that we currently have in place. It's both sweepings and catch basin debris. They are treated as two different wastes. So we have to sample them. We do keep them separate. Um, so we have to sample them and have them disposed of properly. Um, so that is the next agenda item. I don't want to keep delaying this. We've done the legwork to try to go out and get the quotes because we only have to get written quotes under um, for disposal of rubbish and debris. We don't have to put it out to bid. Um, that's part of 30B. But um, the landfill royalties money, because this used to be coming as part of the landfill and we don't have another budget source, was the reason that we were looking to take it out of the landfill royalties. All right. Thank you. Councilors, have any question? Councilor Dow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. Uh, so this is last minute uh, thing. Like Casella never want to. Uh, discussed it in the past or anything just came up because seventy-five thousand dollar we might not get back. I mean, it's a big. So we've been working with Casella for the last. Well, this was posed when Casella first um, closed the landfill, and the agreement. You know, we started negotiating with the agreement of what we were going to do with the debris um, for both of them. And at that time, it was well store it and we'll work on it. Um, I was allowing the Board of Health to try to, and the former town manager to spearhead the, you know, questions and, and deal with Casella and them because I didn't have direct contacts with them, but it never went anywhere. So at the, some point, we don't have any more room. We're needing to deal with the problem. I, with Matt, went out and we estimated how much we had, and we went out to firms to get quotes on what the disposal cost would be. Uh, it's it's any legal advice or did we check with the thing going on right now with Casella if that can be included on what's going on regarding uh, what we have the issue between the town and Casella or that suppers we can't add it to the previous issue too I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to Point something, you know. I don't want to probably say clearly, like you understand me, Heather. What I'm trying to ask you. 
I, do, I don't have any dealings with Casella directly regarding the landfill um, settlement agreement, so that would have to go through the town manager or the Board of Health. Or I know Jack was much more uh, involved in it. Maybe he can give us some answers to what the discussions were in that agreement. But um, I, I have asked the questions through both the former town manager and Andy at the Board of Health to can will they still take our debris and will they still our catch basin waste and our street sweepings in the past when we were disposing of them up there we were directly bringing them to the landfill so that is part of it there's transportation for the disposal of these at a different location don't believe they can take them right up at the landfill right now or presently but you know that that is one of the issues that we have going on so the DPW department able to handle that, sweeping and cleaning the catch base, or we have to hire a private company? Currently, we are doing it all in-house. We have um, started to reach out to find out prices for if we went outside to have catch basins and street sweepings, but currently it's done all in-house. I did get one price <laughs> that it was um, about $25 a catch basin, I think, to and 25 to 27 dollars to catch basin to if we hired it out thank you mr chair thank you Adam. uh thank you councilor steves um thank you mr chairman a couple of points uh, first off i don't recall this coming up during the discussions regarding the um uh, the the, con the the issues that we dealt with with consolidate to re to, re to extend the contract um and I kind of have to be a little bit careful in what I'm saying because most of it was executive session stuff. Um, but one of the concerns that I have is that I would certainly read it as a violation of their contract because they had been taking it previously, um, and they were taking and they're taking all of our other trash to other locations per our contract. I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be included as part of that. And that's, that is a concern that I would have. Um, I would understand, I understand what you're, you're saying, Heather, about needing to get this stuff done. And that 75 grand seems to be really steep to me. Um, does this stuff have to be treated as hazardous waste? It's, it's sampled, it has to be sampled. Um, every 5, 000, every um, 500 cubic yards, there has to be analytical done on it. And depending on what the analytical said, but it, Normally, it doesn't. It's a regulated waste, but it isn't a hazardous waste. Okay. Any thoughts on either uh, uh, that, that particular issue, either you or Mr. McCall, as far as, I know you mentioned that about the contract, and I don't remember even talking about this particular issue. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with you, and at the time that the negotiations were going on, we, the board, the DPW did provide to the Board of Health and Ron, both um, St. Angelo, the former town manager, how much waste we generated uh, on average a year in catch basins and sweepings um, for both, and because we were asked. But that after that, I didn't have any part of the negotiation, so I can't speak to that. Right, okay. Are you all set, Councilor? Uh, for the moment. All right. Uh, Councilor Catrona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you. To the town manager, um, Mr. McCall, would you see, based on the, the landfill agreement now and the contract, is there any leverage there um, for the contract, for the current contract that you see? You know, putting an attorney so, uh, hat on. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, I do not have the entire contract. There are exhibits that uh, call out uh, or call out the various obligations. I do not have the entire part, so I, I did write an email this afternoon to our, our counsel at uh, Myra O'Connell, uh, explaining the situation and asking, you know, just from the the, the core of it, it everybody's reaffirming their obligations that were existing and that those were more clearly specified in certain exhibits, which I don't have. So until I see the exhibits or get a, a quick answer from the council, 
for it. I'm not going to be able to answer you, Council Control. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other councillors have any questions? Councillor Daniel? No, sir. Uh, Councillor Jovan or Councillor Adams, do you have any questions? Uh, I just, uh, I'm going to tread lightly here because <clears throat> of, right. of where we're at. So, I mean, I see two issues here. One, we, we have to remove this material um, because of space issues and any continued operations down there. Um, so until until we receive a response from uh, Attorney McKay, from Mayor O'Connell, I'd be reluctant to state anything else because uh, that negotiated agreement was that uh, what the public record part was that they were they were to do everything that was in the contract um, that was stipulated. So until we get guidance from Attorney McKay, because he's intimately uh, knowledgeable of that entire contract and did a good job for us. I I'd be reluctant to say anything further on whether it's in the contract or not. This is the first time I've heard about it. I didn't aware. I wasn't aware that it had gone up to um, former town manager um, Saint Angel, or, or that an issue was. I, I think it's in the same vein as uh, some of the other things that we had to circle back with the seller and say it was in the contract, such as. You know, if, if we recall originally, they weren't going to pick up our uh, leave, uh, leaves on the curbside like they were supposed to. Um, so this is just yet another one of those things that we have to uh, see what was in the contract and make sure that they uh, do the obligations they were responsible for. But I, I will await uh, Attorney McCall's review of that information uh, regarding that. But the other issue is that we have a, a matter incident right now that has to be rectified. So. I would say move forward with that because we do have the, the funding to do that and then seek uh, any reimbursement from uh, uh, the seller uh, based on any contract language. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Adams? Nothing at this time, thank you. All right, seeing no other uh, comments, um, we'll have a roll call. I have a quick question, Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry, Councilor Steves. Do you to Heather? Um, roughly, given how, where where things are being stored and whatnot, how much time do you think you would have? You would have space to. I mean, rephrase the question. How do I phrase the question? Um, how much time do you think we would have to get the the answers that we need to have before you absolutely have to have this stuff done? Um. Well, we're actively street sweeping now and we'll be starting patch base and cleaning very soon. So that's part of the issue. We don't really have enough room for this year. So um, we're having, we're definitely having issues now. So I guess we could probably wait, you know, we have to wait obviously until Monday for council and hoping that maybe we, before we, this would get council, we would have an issue, uh, an answer to our question of whether we're going to be able to pursue Casella or not. And at that time, we could always table any approving of the contract or the, you know, depending on how things were going. But yeah, we're, we're very much running out of space. I've been being harped on by my, um, by my guys down that bringing the material down there, my operations manager, foreman, <laughs> telling me, Heather, we need to deal with this, we need to deal with this, we need to deal with this. So that is, you know, after hearing that, multiple times this spring already, we, we were to the point where I, we had to deal with it. We let okay. the folks were moving forward, we're trying to be proactive. Okay, thank you. You all said, Councilor? Yes. Councilor Dow. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. The, how did the proposal say uh, almost 60,000? Why are you asking for 75? So, the quantities in the proposal were bid were quotes to estimate off of. Um, and you have to remember, our, we're still bringing material in right now because we are sweeping. So we will. We wanted to set the contract up so that it's up to seventy-five thousand, so we could dispose of as much material as possible. If we do have all that material, we'll be able to leave it in that fund until for funding for next year, because obviously we're going to accumulate it all over the winter, I mean, over the spring and the summer, 
and then in the fall we'll be wanting to dispose of more. So we have estimated the amount based on the size of the piles, but until they actually bring them to the landfill and get us bills of lading, we're not going to know the tonnage. Now they'll have a contract that they can't go over that, that amount of money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Uh, so we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Councillor Dow? Yes. Councillor Steves? Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you. Agenda item number five. Discuss quotes received. No, agenda item number six, sorry. Oh, no, it's, it's the same one, right? Yeah. Is this a duplicate or is it the same no, one? It's, it's a different one. It's the catch basically, I believe. The, the first one was the transfer to have the money. The second one is the contract. Okay, thank you. Discuss quotes received for catch basin and street sweeping debris disposal and review draft contract with Capital Environmental LLC for up to 75,000. Entertain a motion to vote to recommend that council ratify the contract with Capital Environmental LLC for up to $75,000 from account 003499.589900.191271 special appropriations catch basin and street sweeping disposal do i have a motion please motion move second thank you um First, I see you, Councillor Steves. Uh, first, Heather, did you want to speak to this or pretty much is self explain yeah, I'll give you a summary, a quick summary. Yep. So kind of what we spoke of before, we went out to three companies and received quotes back based on an estimated amount of material for both catch basin waste and um, in street sweepings. Um, those are estimated by based on the piles that we have existing down at the facility. We showed them the piles. They were able to come out and take a look at them. They gave us their proposals um, in writing via email. Um, we actually did get one. I'm sure that your copy says that NEDT hadn't have submitted yet. We actually did get a third quote from them. Um, they, their price totaled 79,675 based on the same quantities, so they weren't competitive. Um, so we, you know, we have spoken talk to them, um, to all three of the companies. They all handle them a little bit differently with their analytical and their testing and bill of ladings and different things. But when we totaled up what their quotes were, Capital Environmental was the most economical. Um, I can provide you guys with the, the summary showing NEDT for your packages when it goes to council. And I also do have a signed the draft agreement that you have, we do have a signed copy back on Capital Environmental LLC. Okay, thank you. Councilor Steves? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Heather, um, have you ever done any business with this Capital Environmental? Um, no, I haven't, but I do know that other towns in the area have used them. Okay, so did you get decent references from these people, from yes. the other ones? You did, okay. We had used NEDT in the past, so that's one of the reasons we reached out to them. But they actually told us right up front that they probably weren't going to be cocky. You know, they they were like, we we've done it, but we're probably not as cost competitive as we. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Dow. Did you have any questions? I'm good at this time. Thank you. All right. Any any other councilors have any questions? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we'll take a roll call. Councilor Dow? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. Agenda item number six. Discuss engineering quotes received for West Street Engineering Services. Review proposal from Ty and Bond for West Street Engineering Services for the amount of $160,350 including construction oversight and subservice investigation. Entertain a motion to vote to recommend that council ratify engineering contract with tie and bond for $160,350 to be funded from chapter 90. Could I have a motion please? Motion move. 
So moved. Thank you. Heather or Mr. McCall? Mr. Chairman, I would prefer to move lately on this particular matter. Thank you. Heather? Okay, yep. So West Street, I think as everybody is aware, is part of our combined CDBG and um, DPW and water and sewer combined project to redo West Street. So the first step of this would be to get the engineering design completed. Um, like I said, we have sewer work that needs to be done, replacing a um, compromised sewer line up at the top of West Street. There's water lines that need to be replaced at the lower part of West Street. We're going to re we're going to evaluate all the drainage system to make sure that it's compliant with MS4 and that we don't have any drainage issues. And it will involve resurfacing of West Street um, and new sidewalks on parts of West Street. So this is quite the extensive project. Um, we went out to bid for, to five engineers. We received three quotes back. Um, you have a summary of the quotes in your packet. We, as we always do when we look at quotes, we try to get them as much as we can as apples to apples, and we ask them to give us their hours that they think that you know they're committing to the project, and we use that to also compare for comparison fact um, sake. So be, you know, all three companies um, we have worked with extensively in the past, BHB and Tie and Bond, um, were very close in cost. But our recommendation from the DPW standpoint came down to the number of hours that they were committing to work on the project for what the cost was. Um, that is how we made our recommendation for Tie and Bond, because they had a a much higher degree of hours, even with not having their own surveyors doing the work. So that wasn't even including any subcontractor hours. Um, I think this is gonna be a really good project. I think all of us know that West Street's in, in very rough shape and uh, really needs to be addressed quickly. So I am looking forward to trying to get this project started and the design up and going so that we can get some of the work done um, and figure out how we're going to schedule the work with the school there. So that will be another once we get into that section of how we work with schedule. Um, it might be that we have to do some work while school is in session just so that we can get the project completed. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councilor Seven, any questions? Councilor Dow? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, to you. <coughs> Heather, on the, on the breakdown details saying, you know, like allowed draining CCTV is not included. Does that mean you're gonna come back for more money in the future or that's, that's the final 160 right now and that, because it, you know, some places have not included or included different, yeah. different like. Yeah. So let me explain, Joe. So we tried to make sure that we are comparing apples to apples so because VHB had an allowance in there, but Ty and Vaughn and Stantec didn't, we took, we didn't use it to compare their costs. So anything that is it says not included means that it wasn't used for comparison and cost because the other two companies didn't include it. We are at this point, um, We are assuming at this point that we will only need to do an RDA and not an NOI, but that might be a task that would have to be added based on that RDA determination. An RDA is a request for determination that goes for our conservation commission, but we won't be able to do that until that time. If that happens, then we will have to add wetlands delineation and um, NOI fine. It's not like a numbers allows somewhere we can put, or we'll have to leave it open. I mean, it could come back to 300,000. Like, it's kind of like a it, blind. It, it, I mean, yeah, it, it, I mean, I could ask them to give us a, uh, an option to add those dependent if you'd like, but I, you know, we, we can't, we have to basically negotiate it at this time if that's what you would like. So you might come back for more money, correct? If the, if, the, if the Conservation Commission requires us to do a notice of intent, we will have to do a wetlands delineation and a NOI filing. So at this time you and can't, 
at, at this time we can't ask the the Department of Conservation we if we need it or not. We can't ask before we move forward. No, we can't ask them at this time. We, we, you can't ask them until you actually have plans in your hands and be able to do a final. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We can, we can ask the engineers to give us a quote on that as an option if we need it, but if we don't need it, we don't want to pay for it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilor Dow. Thank you, Heather. Councilor Steves? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I got, I've got a few questions from the documents. Um, one thing I was curious about is that uh, you did mention that VHB included their survey and time bond does not. Um, what would you say the impact of the difference would be? Um, when, I mean, if what I read it, it seems like we would be still paying for it if time bond did sub, did sub it out and it seems to be in there at 18 grand in their it's, contract. It, it's in there, we just don't have a number of hours for it. Right. So VHB's hours include survey, where right. iron bonds don't. So if you included the subcontractor's survey in the hours, you're probably talking another 100, 150 hours. Which is what I was wondering, because I noticed that in, yes. that, in the, uh, there, that there was a huge difference in that section of 230 hours versus 40 hours for preliminary design, which is yes. the section that was included in. Yep. Um, and so, so, but ultimately we're still paying it either way. So that, that seems like kind of odd. Why, why they wouldn't clearly state that this is the number of hours that they'll take. Because I mean, they don't get that from their subcontractor. Okay, okay. Um, also, I was curious to see here. Um, they, <laughs> you mentioned the in the contract, they mentioned the possibility of subsurface borings. Um, why might they be needed or not? I've actually included them in the cost because I want them done. Okay. So okay. you can see in time bonds, even though the other two didn't have them in their contract, when we compared it, we put an allowance in for the subcontractor borings. And you know, for to go back to Councillor Dow's question, if we included ten thousand dollar allowance under here for wetlands, that should more than cover it based on what the other bids were. Um, right. It was three thousand for wetlands and seven thousand for an NOI fee. If he's more comfortable including in their count their their contract an allowance of up to ten thousand for wetlands, I'm sure that they would be have you know we could negotiate something like that into there. Okay. And that's about you know from my experience on a project this size and with this size company, that's it might be a little high. That's why I do it as an allowance of an up to fee um, as opposed to like a set fee. Okay. Does the town actually have to pay for NOI filings considering it's a town board? We don't have to pay the filing fees if it's just an NOI. If there right. is a um, endangered species, we do have to pay that. And I'm assuming the, and the, the, the other money would be for, for their work on the project. Correct. Okay. Um, and the other question that I had is, time <clears throat> on, it, the, the page that talks about pre-qualifications in the, in the file, um, what's the distinction between a basic, intermediate, and complex roadway, and how does this road fit into those descriptions? Because I noticed that they were not qualified for complex roadways. So a complex roadway would be like a highway. Okay. It's not, not just a radio service fee. Okay. Right. So I guess, would ours be like a, an intermediate roadway in this case? Yeah. Yeah. Or a basic, yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Any other councillors have any questions? Councillor Catrona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the DPW Director Heather. Under its assumptions and exclusions, I see that. Um, it says, if any of those services are required, they'll modify the proposal accordingly to meet these needs. Um, and some of those are permit applications, cost of police details, um, attendance at meetings, and there's a, there's a few others that, that are on here. Um, so would you be coming back to the council to modify this agreement? Well, the town always directly pays for cost of police details, so we'll never, we don't have to worry about that. Um, if they, if we exceed with their, with number of meetings and things, then then we would have to come back for something like that. But 
you know, it's only if something is way out of scope that we would be coming back. Thank you. If I can continue. Yeah. Thanks. Um, now, they're going to provide a part-time construction observation approximately 35 hours. Um, obviously, the town will have the final sign-off, correct? So, um, I see drillings and borings. So, who, who's going to be overseeing this project from the town side? Well, it will be, um, considering this is so much road work and it's combined water sewer, Chapter 90, and then partially CDBG, it will be overseen by my department. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Catrona. Anybody else have any questions? If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to shout it out because it's hard. I got to one more, Mr. Chairman. It's hard to see the signs up there, Councilor Steves. Yeah, one more quick question that occurred to me. I should have asked it a second ago. Um, I noticed that the the contract says a contract value not to exceed one hundred sixty thousand three hundred, but the agenda says one hundred sixty thousand three fifty. Which hmm. interesting. Well, the summary of the bid says 160300 so I would go with the 300 okay. And um, the only thing I would like to know is if do you want me to put an allowance in there for wetlands? How much would that add to the, to the bid? You're saying that, that 10000 We could We could say, we can call them and say, listen, based on the other one, we'll give you an allowance up to $10,000 if wetlands permit is needed and see if they agree to it. Mm -hmm. Presumably, obviously, they wouldn't use it if they don't need it. So correct. You wouldn't pay them for that if we don't need it. Okay. Correct. That would make sense to me, but I'm the only one. I'm I'm one person. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Dow. Would that make you? Would that make you happier? I I didn't. Excuse me. I didn't hear. So what? Yeah, so what we were talking about is doing an allowance on their contract for if a wetlands permit was required, if the NOI and the wetlands delineation were needed, of up to a $10,000 limit. So meaning that they only, they wouldn't get the money automatically, it would only be, you know, they would only have an allowance in case it needed to happen, but that way we wouldn't have to come back to council if it was needed. Okay. Is somebody making an amendment here? I thought we were talking about the difference in uh, the bid here, uh, 160350 I did originally raise that point, yeah. And the but, paperwork says 160300 Correct, but it simply say if we need more money for conservation, we're going to come back. So I ask we can put any... Uh, amount or any limit or budget we can work around and at the beginning it was no now probably ten thousand dollars you can come back and ask for it i don't know if you want to amend that if you want to make so are you thinking so are you thinking heather of, of making it one hundred seventy thousand three hundred is at that way and then you'll put the language in there for the for the that that I, I mean, okay i have no problem with that i'll i'll make that change i'll uh, I don't remember who actually made that. I think I made the motion, so I'll, I'll make that as... Uh, can, we can do that as a friendly amendment, I suppose. It's very difficult to hear what you're saying, Councillor. Uh, so you want to add an amendment to this to, for the wetland delineation of $10,000? So, so that would make it to not to exceed 170300 Okay. So the amendment is... Not to exceed 170,300. Yeah. That, that's going to be included to conservation. We wouldn't want to say 170, yeah. and then later on they're going to come back saying we need more money for, you know, it's going to be complete project, correct? That's the plan. <laughs> okay. Is there a contingency in this, Heather? Not for, not for engineering, right? Nope. All right, Councilor Steves made an amendment. Did you want to second it? Second it. So we'll have a vote on the amendment. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Dow? Yes. Councilor Marchetti is no. All right, so then we'll move to the final uh, agenda. <clears throat> With the amendment. Uh, point of order, Councilor Marchetti. 
Yes, Councilor. You just uh, you just voted on the amendment only, not the full yeah. motion as amended. Right. That's what he was just going to do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I thought there was another. No, he said the final agenda item. I thought. So we'll vote on the agenda as amended. Yeah, it's gonna to, to move to the town council to to move to the town council. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Councilor Dow. Yes. yes. Councilor Steves. Yes. And Marchetti is no. Thank you. Motion passes two to one. Councilor Mark, Council Mark, can you just read off the motion so that when the agenda comes, I know what it is, so I can make sure it's correct as amended. Okay. Uh, the, um, the motion is entertain a motion to vote to recommend that council ratify engineering contract with tie and bond not to exceed 170300 to be funded from Chapter 90. I thought it was 170 total. 17300 right? Am I correct? Yeah. All right. Thank okay. you. Does that sound good, Com Councilor Joban? Complete project. Complete project. You want to add that at the end? <laughs> Complete project. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's important. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I, I just, uh, I, I just think it'd be uh, all right. I, I think the, the intent was the not to exceed was just to allow an allowance. So uh, I would recommend that, and you can just so just for a, a recommendation that it's uh, both uh, recommend the council ratify engineering contract with Ty and Bond. For a total amount of one hundred seventy thousand three hundred, with a contract of one sixty three hundred three hundred, an additional allowance of ten thousand for any additional wetlands permanent. Does that sound what we're trying to do? I just want to make sure it's correct. Because I don't want to say to Council Dow's previous point was we don't want to come back and say well we have one hundred seventy. We're just specifically right. ten thousand for the allowance only, which wasn't part of the contract. That is, that, is what, that was my intent, yes. All right, yes. that's, that's so. acceptable. Thank you. Do you want us to re-vote okay. on that? Do you want us to have another no. vote? Okay. No, no, I'll just write it out the way that is, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, agenda item number seven. Discuss Mass Dot Highway Divisions Project, project 608862, Southridge Bridge Replacement, Mill Street over McKinstry Brook, S-21-21. 009 and S-21-003, Mill Street over the Quinnebog River, project eligibility notification letter dated 225-2021. Entertain a motion to vote to recommend that council authorize the town manager to sound, sign the attachment A, municipality acknowledge of project eligibility notification and vote to fund the right-of-way acquisition accordance with the requirements of the letter by Chapter 90 or other available sources. Can I have a motion? Uh, motion move. Thank you. Councilor Steve, did you second that? Um, yeah, I'll second. All right. Uh, town manager or Heather? I think Michael's muted, but so I think he said, did defer to me, so I'll go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and um, so I just, I, I, I know you guys have the letter in your pocket, so let me explain <laughs> briefly. This is kind of the good news we have been waiting for. Um, I had previously been aware of um, MassDOT doing the bridge over Mill Street over McKinstry Brook. This is confirmation that they have added to the project Mill Street over the Quinnebog River which means that they are funding as part of their TIP projects of the off system bridges, which means it's not a bridge that is under MassDOT control. It is a town bridge, but it's off system. They are funding the repair and replacement of both of those bridges on Mill Street. Um, this is what we were um, working with the legislatures legislators on. This is what we were working with our engineers on to position us to be able to get the Mill Street Bridge over the Quinnebog added. So this is the good news that they are telling us that our project is eligible. The one part of the project that they do not cover is right-of-way acquisition. And they do make you commit that you will cover the cost of that right-of-way acquisition and right-of-way plans. Um, 
So what you have in front of you is the letter that says basically, yes, we have acknowledged, but the next step after that is that we have to make a commitment of um, the money to pay for the right of ways. We don't know what that's going to be yet. That is not determined until the right of way plans are done. The first step in the right of way plans is basically the survey and they lay out the bridges and they determine, you know, they have to do the survey plans, but that has to be done with the beginning parts of the bridge project. Um, we have asked the engineer for the state, which is VHB, um, but state is paying for them for that not us, to give us a quote for the right-of-way portion of the project as far as from the engineering standpoint. So there is engineering and survey for right-of-way, and then there's title research that has to be done, and then there's the actual acquisition. Um, the good news, a little more good news on that, is that when the original Quinnebog Bridge was built, or yes, probably when it was built back in the 50s, those right-of-ways, um, those plans exist. And we actually already have some easements for perpetual care. So we might have some coverage on that. Um, it's not as clear over on the McKinstry Brook side. So we will also have to do the right-of-way plans for those and do any land takings. But it's much smaller in scope than doing a big project like we're going to do on Hook Street. Um, at this point, you'll see in the capital budget, I've estimated to put a number in of like $75,000 for this year so that we can get the plans going for the capital, um, but that can be, like we said, taken out of Chapter 90. It can be funded by Chapter 90, or we can fund it from a different source. We just have to say, yes, we're committing to funding. But I, I do, um, right now, I don't think I put it in here, but I think it's a, I don't, oh, $4.3 million for bridge repairs for both bridges. So that's very considerable. That's better than we're doing with our small bridge program. So um, I hope that we see this as a big win for the town. Okay. All right, thank you. Any questions, Councilor Dow? No, thank you. Councilor Steves? Um, first off, thank you for that. It was a good description. And I think you mostly answered the questions I had. However, our packet only includes the first page of the letter. Oh. And the signature pages. There's a bunch of missing stuff in the middle. <laughs> well, I'll hold it up because I don't think I can send it to you, but it just says something like this. But I will make text, sure. Yeah, the text it, then the, te the text page that I have ends with the preparation of right of way plans are required at every, and it just stops. Oh, and do you get attachment A? I have. Let's see. It jumps from there to the attachment A signature page, but there's nothing between the two. It's on. You know I have it on the other side. Mine's double printed, so. You've got a hard copy? So it's probably the back side that I don't have, so. Oh, okay. The preparation I, of right I of way plans. I'm sure that we get the complete letter to you. If okay. there's something Thank missing. You. Preparation of right of way plans are required at every stage of design. Yep. Submission based on an instrument survey that meets 250 CMR 6.01 and 6.02. Recordable plans and instruments, an instrument will be required. And then it's thank you for your attention to the information in this letter uh, and for your support of transportation system improvements in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. If you have any questions or would like additional information, please contact Mohammed Nabosi, District 3 Bridge Engineer. His phone number and it's sincerely Barry, Barry Lor Lorurian. I don't know if I pronounced his word correctly. That's all that was okay. on the second page. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't know if it was, it was a lot of it or a little of it, but okay, cool. All right, any other questions? Any counselors? Any counselors on, on the call want to ask a question? Just uh, shout it out. Thank you. Uh, if not, uh, we'll take a roll call. Counselor Dow? Yes. Counselor Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes. Motion passes three to zero. Thank you. Agenda item number eight, discuss rental of portable AC unit and generator for the community center in support of the vaccination distribution site. Town has requested confirmation from FEMA that costs will be 100% reimbursable. 
Still waiting confirmation from FEMA. Update provided at meeting. Entertain a motion to vote to recommend that council approve the rental agreement for AC equipment and generator for the community center from FEMA funds from Sunbelt for the next 24 weeks for the amount of $30,150 funded from FEMA reimbursements. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, Heather? Or Mr. McCall, either? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know that Chief Normandin had been looking into this. This is for the vaccination distribution site up at the community center. Uh, and it was anticipated as we run into the summer months, it was going to get warmer within that facility. And we were looking for a solution to uh, cool the, the inner workings of the, the hall. And they went out and looked at different quotes from different vendors to come up with a solution. Sunbelt um, was the lowest, is my recollection. And what they would be able to do is, if, if you've ever seen in the summertime, they can raise that very large door at the end and they have a wood panel that goes across the bottom and then they can put holes in there, one to bring the cold air out and the other one to use as the return. And as the chief has indicated to me that we'll be eligible for uh, FEMA reimbursements for these monies um, as part of the ongoing COVID response. Thank you. Heather, would you like to add anything? Sure, I, I'll just add that I have checked with Karen right before I left today and FEMA did get back to us this morning saying that they haven't got a, you know, from the upper, that we have people that we, you know, put questions to, and then they were bringing it up to their superiors to try to get a confirmation. They still haven't, but they are working on it. They are aware of it. They do believe this would be reimbursable because it is not a permanent thing. It is a temporary rental type of piece of equipment that they've already kind of, uh, I was on the phone call with them, uh, assured that. Um, I did meet with the people on site. We showed them with the fire chief. We showed them the locations. We showed them how it was gonna connect. They all looked at the space and evaluated it. They all came up with the same type of sizing for the AC unit. Um, their generators were all, you know, sized appropriately to be able to handle the units, um, to handle their needs. And um, we're looking, we'll have to put it right outside of that big door and pipe it in um, and be able to shut it at night and turn it back off on in the morning. And we'll be handling the refueling operations. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions, Councillors? Councillor Steves? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, regarding fuel, um, do you have any idea how much fuel it's actually likely to use, and um, how are we funding that? So I would assume because the fuel will be reimbursable from FEMA, it will, right. we will have to put the money out and then ask as a request. Um, I don't know that we've gotten to that question yet. Uh, I don't know how much it would use, but I know that those type of size generators usually are somewhere around 20 gallons a day. 20 gallons a day. Hmm. You know, when they're running full time like this. So, it, you know, it's, it's like running an engine all day long. Right. Okay, where, would, where do we normally, would we get, be getting it from our heating fuel account probably? Would that make sense? Probably will come... <clears throat> <clears throat> probably will come from our fuel account like for our vehicles to tell you the truth because it will come we'll, we'll use our um, fuel truck that we have to fill it um, we'll be able to fill the and there and then refill the generator with diesel uh, and, and honestly I did look at that account recently because we just had, just had to buy gasoline and we do have mm -hmm. money available in that account so I'm not completely worried about you know, oh my goodness, how are we gonna cover this cost, you know? Okay, thanks. Thank you, Councilor Dow. Thank you, Mr. Chair, to you. I got a question, Heather. We gonna rent equipment and do all the work. We cannot make it permitted in the building, like do the work and hire company and put the the AC unit, the ducts, everything, 
we don't have to rent it. The thirty thousand dollars we can we can get from FEMA. We cannot use it to have that building done the correct way. We don't have to rent equipment and lose that thirty thousand. Is that possible? So I I will say this. Um, I. I kind of said the same thing to the fire chief. I said, why don't we just put AC in the building? Um, you know, if it's going to be that much of a cost. But I think we would still be looking at having to go out to bid with an engineering design, having it designed, all of that type of situation, because it is like a very large structure. Um, these per portable units, you know, they're designed to come in and to be able to retrofit. We are still talking 25 ton. The existing building doesn't have the electrical capacity to, to service a, a AC unit that big. That is why we have to bring in the generator. So it becomes a very expensive project very quickly. And FEMA has also indicated to us that the only reason it's reimbursable is because it's temporary in nature to specifically deal with COVID. If we made it permanent in nature, then it would likely not be reimbursable. Yeah, just wondering because you know it's a thirty thousand dollars. You know, I, you know, I, I just ask if we can, you know, use it and you know and keep the thing, not rent it. So, I understand it's uh, FEMA is gonna pay back, but it's still money. You know, we can uh, maybe we can. I don't know. Just asking. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Councilor Steves. I mean, I totally, I totally sympathize with what Councilor Dowage is saying. I think, I think, I think Heather does too. Um, but that, to get something permanent in there, it might be a good idea to, to talk to Roland and go through Triepic and get some of the state, permanent state grants or whatever it is, because that is our permanent EOC site. Just, we just happen to be using it now for COVID, but that is our general EOC site. It's a shelter. It's all kinds of things. Voting. So that might be a way to get something like that permanently funded. Yep. Thank you. That is where we vote, too. So. My only question is, I do have one question, is, uh, is it going to be loud, is it going to be noisy, because there are residents around there that have complained in the past? Um, I, I don't know how noisy it is. It will be a generator, so there definitely is the hum of when a generator is running. Um, I don't think the AC unit would be as much as the, as the noise source as the generator. Um, it will be just during daytime hours. We intend to turn it off at night, so it's not going to be in the evening. So, you know, it, well, overnight, it, right now they're only open 7 to 7. So at some point, I would, as long as, you know, we all know that you can get those hot August days that they need to run it into the evening. So that's a possibility, but I don't see it running past 7 o'clock, 7.30 at night. All right. Thank you. Any other councillors? Councillor Katrona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, let me let me start off by saying I certainly support this. This is this is forward thinking uh, on on behalf of the the entire EOC committee, uh, DPW director, the town manager. I do have a few questions. Heather, do you know how many square feet the community center is? Um. When we were out there, they were actually saying the size of the room because it's not the whole building; it's just the the hall. And I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say maybe somewhere around seventy by fifty. But um, I know that that Roland was with us, and he was spotting the numbers right off the top of his head. Okay, thank you. Um, first, let, let me say the average twenty-five ton unit. I'm not sure how familiar you are with them. Um, can handle a, a heat load up to about 10,000 square feet. They push about 12,000 CFM. Uh, they're, they're 480 volts. They could be 460. It depends how, how you want to wire them. Um, and they have 20 inch ducts with supply and returns. I've seen them, I've used them. A question now, when it gets time for the generator, I guess. I don't know why we couldn't possibly look at wiring this in and putting some temporary wiring in place to alleviate the noise as this is a residential area. That's one. Um, doing some math and the homework, an average generator 
an 80 kilowatt generator, um, a little bit different than a, than 100. If it runs at 50%, uses about four gallons an hour. If it runs at a quarter load, it's about two and a half, and full load's about seven and a half gallons an hour. So I, I also took the liberty to get in touch with this vendor. This particular unit holds, um, has, has about 200 gallon capacity as well, which is substantial. So my question also was the fuel, um, the noise that these emit are between 85 and 90 dB, which is acceptable. That's the noise of the generator. But again, we have to keep in mind, this says 15 hours a day. So is that 7 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Is that a rough estimate? Let's try and keep the community in mind and, and the taxpayers and the residents. And I would certainly look into temporary wiring and see if three phase is available in that building. And is that something that FEMA would cover as well to, to put some temporary wiring in? Um, I'm sure it comes in on a, on a tandem axle. Um, does it have fluid containment? That question couldn't be answered today. And then we have to be concerned with vandalism as well in, that, you know, in any area in town. Um, I think it's a concern. Um, so those are some questions I think that I have. Again, this is very good thinking ahead of time rather than waiting until it's 80, 90 degrees and it's hot, humid, and we're trying to, trying to work through something. So I'm glad to see that we're doing something ahead of time now and we're being proactive. But um, uh, I think if we can get some of those questions answered before Monday night, um, I would certainly appreciate it. And if we could certainly look into alleviating the generator, I think it would save us not only the time of filling the generator, which based on my calculations, we're gonna be filling this about every day and a half if, if we run at 100% load. Um, and that's gonna be cumbersome on somebody. So uh, I think I've, that's everything for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Katrona. Uh, Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. <clears throat> to Heather, um, I, I just see that um, under the general uh, conditions that taxes and fees are not um, included in the quote, will they substantially increase the amount of uh, the bid? I don't, I don't believe they can charge us taxes and fees because we're tax exempt. Okay, but what about the only that? The additional fee that I see is the PM service that's due every 300 hours, which they do have on the bottom of that. Okay, uh, very it's good. 350 per service. Okay. Um, which I did actually estimate into their quote, into their, their price that. 30,150 includes a PM service. Um, and I asked him, I think it was like at least with the 300 hours, so there's more than one service included. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I noticed that the, the, we're talking um, six four week periods. Uh, to the town manager, if I may, um, is the center going to be open through December? Is there plans on it being open that long? Through you, Mr. Chairman, to uh, Council Daniel. I don't know that we know how long it will be open. Um, you know, they're, they're expanding who can get shots on a regular basis. Um, I know we're looking through the summer, but it, it could continue well into the fall. We've only, I think the last general estimates I've heard, we've less than 20% of the state has been fully vaccinated or even had one shot. So it's gonna take some time and, and they're reducing some of the sites in the state to these larger super sites. We're one of the few um, smaller regional ones that's still open. Uh, so I, I envision us going through the summer, at least in the fall. I couldn't guarantee the winter. I don't know that. That would probably be a better question for um, somebody from Harrington or the, the chief who's our chairman of our emergency operations. And I can look into that.
on Monday night. Thank you. Thank you. I think that the nice thing with this is that we're not committing to doing the six weeks. We just estimated it I mean, six months. We just estimated it based on that. So that would give us starting in April through September, basically. Um, we could get rid of it, you know, October. Hopefully it will be getting cool enough that we don't need it. Um, they have had some days already down there that it gets very stuffy because there isn't a lot of airflow in the building. I mean, they have a lot of people in there at different times going in and going through. So, you know, when we get our 60 degree days, it's getting very warm inside of that space. So even though it's not very warm outside yet, it's getting very stuffy and um, needs some airflow in that space. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Steves? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, one thing when you were talking about the generator, it occurred to me, there is a generator already down there. I think it's it not big enough to do this. <laughs> yeah, and that's the backup emergency generator for right. the building. Um, I don't think it, and, and I will defer to Roland a little bit because he is actually an electrician by trade, so he knows a little bit more than us. So I think they had already looked at both the questions of is there enough existing power just to power uh, AC units? And, you know, be given that is the backup generator for the rest of the site, would it have enough power to do both? So, okay. but I would confirm with him on both of those questions because obviously he is more, he's on site, he can take a look at the existing channels and what they have for service. Right, and he was, he was very instrumental in getting that place, the generator, in the first place. So he's been involved with Triapic for years. Um, and the other question I had is, the contract specifically talks about having uh, 50 feet of uh, number two banded five wire. Is that, is that what Joe Catrona is referring to? No. As far as wiring it into the, into the system or what? I'm not sure that's what, exactly what that would even be used for. I think that is to connect the generator to the AC, mm -hmm. to power the AC unit. Yes. Councilor Catrona, did yes, you want to answer? Is, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That is correct. That's to connect the, the unit to the generator itself. And as, as far as connecting to the generator there at the community center, it would be my suggestion, recommendation that we leave it alone. It's on a transfer, automatic transfer switch, I'm sure. And we, you, you don't want to get involved in touching any of that equipment. That's sensitive. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Are you all set, Councillor? All right. I am. Councillor Dow. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for you. So, had there thirty thousand dollars just to rent the equipment, the generator, the ducts to install, nothing included to run them. So, the forty-four eighty-five, maybe, to it's gonna cost every month almost the, the town, correct? That's plus on the 30,000, if the way I read it, for, uh, yeah. you know, for fuels and uh, a different, uh, and to install it, and then you get $350 uh, every 300, uh, 300 hour when they're gonna serve that unit. That shouldn't be included in the rental. That's their responsibility. Uh, I mean, you're renting the unit, why you should pay for maintenance? He's supposed to be maintaining his equipment to make sure it's running uh, properly uh, and provide the service for, you know, because he rent the equipment. I don't know why we have to pay to serve that equipment if he own it, we just rent it from them. Uh, one more question, it's no place in town we can support our uh, businesses or something, building we can rent, already have AC and heat and a nice building or something we can rent and FEMA will uh, pay back the money, better in giving those to the rental equipment and in one way we uh, support our uh, local uh, businesses in another way, we will provide uh, the service for the community. Uh, I'm not sure if that we have like a bigger size building we can use or rent it with the amount of $30,000. Uh, thank you. 
Michael, do you want to address that or? Yeah. I, I, I don't think there's anything that I can comment on at that particular time. Um, we're taking advantage of the, the site and the partnership that we have and we like to look within the community whenever we can for certain other options. Um, but this is a, a short-term temporary solution with the, the air conditioning. And I, I think we just have to go where we, we can to get the um, equipment to, to address the situation. It's, again, it's a temporary basis. Um, and this seemed to be the most viable option, if I understood the question correctly. I think he was asking, could we relocate the site to a building that already had AC? Yes, but it, it, but that is part of the answer. Is I think if we had a facility in place that would have accommodated all these needs, we would have established it early on. This was part of our EDS plan from the very beginning to utilize this particular facility. I don't think anybody envisioned that it could go four seasons. We've had to make accommodations for the heat already and now we have a temporary situation for one particular season that we're going to utilize um, uh, a temporary solution for air conditioning you know could we find someplace I, I don't think that we have anything else in the town and i was also trying to address you know the question came up earlier could we utilize local resources we go where we can find the appropriate um, supplier or, or goods or the type of job and the size of this job being the, the armory. But I do not see any place else in the community. And again, it was part of the original EDS plan. And given the amount of time and work that Harrington has put into that, we've made some temporary modifications to get into additional internet. I think the logistics of moving at this point in time would be very difficult. And again, I don't know where else we'd find a building that size with the parking flow and all of the necessary HVAC requirements to, to accomplish that. So the, the, this short-term temporary solution, I think, is the best thing to do at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Chair Jovan, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, no, I, I, well, I just want to uh, echo what Salman just said. This is the approved EDS site. Uh, we, you know, we had to vet it through the Department of Public Health and all that. And um, there's a lot of equipment that's been uh, up there. So to try to move the operation, I, I don't feel would be practical. I mean, one way you look at this, we looked at the best option for the town, including, you know, the old high school and other locations. So at the time, that was the best option that we had. And, and I agree with the town manager. Nobody thought it would go as long as it has. And uh, I think this is a great solution to try to get us through. Um, and not interrupt any operation. As far as the question that came out about where to get money for the diesel, um, in addition to whatever account Heather has, we also had established the count, town council COVID-19 response account um, that we expend money from and then re, uh, uh, replenish when we get FEMA reimbursements. So we do have uh, that uh, pocket that we set aside for this uh, mitigation. So we still have some funds available there if needed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, if, I, I will also just comment that these ahead. three vendors are also on the state bid list. This is off of a state bid list contract. Um, with it being this amount of money, we would have had to put it out to formal bid if we weren't going to use that contract. All right. Thank you. Uh, unless anybody has any other questions, we'll take a roll call. Oh, Councilor Catrona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of quick questions um, to Heather. Do you think you would have the answer from FEMA for Monday night if this is going to be 100% reimbursable? I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, I, they're not under, I'm not in direct communication with them. The fire chief and um, the finance director are both the ones in communication, but they did respond back today saying that they understood that we were looking for an answer. So I'm hopeful that yes, we will have an answer. Okay, thank you. I think here regardless, this needs to, this needs to happen. And to, for Councilor Dow's question as to the PM service, most of the times they, the other contractor just bury it in the price, in the cost, 
That's what I've seen historically, Correct. and you, you just you don't see it, but it's buried in the price anyway. So, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. So then we'll take a roll call. Councilor Dow, yes. Councilor Steves, yes. And I'm a yes. Three to nothing. Motion passes. Thank you. Agenda item number nine: update on road improvements. If you could give us an update uh, on what's going on with the uh, plans for road improvements. I know at the last meeting uh, you said that um, you were planning on starting in the spring and we are in the spring now, so I thought, and you said you might have some bids coming forward, so I thought maybe you could give us an update on that, uh, either Heather or Michael McCall. Either one, it's fine. <laughs> You know, I just think it would be helpful, Mr. Chairman, in the in the future, rather than just a broad agenda item that it would be communicated so that we could provide a little bit more detail. Um, we did try and anticipate what you were requesting. I know Heather has something, but um, when these items, including the next item, gets put on an agenda and we don't get any communication um, as to what it is people are looking for, it, it does make it difficult for us to anticipate the responses, but to that end, um, we did put together something for this particular item, and Ms. Uh, Blakely can elaborate on that. Thank you. Um, I can't see you right now just because I have my email open so I could give you some dates. Um, we are looking to have it advertise, uh, put in the central register for advertising on April 14th. Um, it has to go in on April 8th for that to happen. So we will advertise on April 14th. We will have bids due on May 4th. The week, depending on when council and subcommittee are, we'll be looking for the week of May 10th through the 17th to recommend an award for DPW subcommittee meeting with the following approval of the contract, the 17th or the 24th, and then enter into the agreement and notice to proceed. That is for the pavement preservation part of the, pro of the um, pavement management project. Once we get that pavement preservation out, we will start looking at um, the structure of how to do the mill and overlay portions of the project, which would be a different contract. And then that would follow in subsequent timelines. All right, thank you. And uh, in the future, I'll try to be a little bit more specific. Apologize for that. I, I oh, kind of I just thought everybody knew because we had been talking about it so much, but I shouldn't even assume that. So, Councilor Steves. Um, yeah, my quick question is regarding um, this. Do you actually have a list? Uh, do you have the list of, of what you roads you plan on approaching this year? Did we? I don't remember. I don't remember. Yes. Yeah, um, I believe that was part of the presentation. Um, I do have a list that the um, deputy director Matt provided me today. So. I can forward um, that on after the meeting if, to all the counselors, if you'd like, with those dates. Sure. And that, that would be the list of the roads that we're looking for pavement preservation. And then we'll do the same when we're doing the documents for the mill and overlays. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Dow, anything? No? Any other counselors? No. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. And the final agenda, or agenda item number 10, discuss town hall facilities management plan. Uh, I apologize, I wasn't more specific. We had been talking about this at the last uh, council meeting. Um, the councilors, or the previous council meeting before uh, last night, we had been talking about adding air conditioning to the council chambers. Uh, the council referred it back to uh, council, the subcommittee, and it was the council chair, uh, Chair Jovan, who recommended that we take into account the entire town hall as a whole. Um, there is a Town of Southbridge Municipal Facility Evaluation and Management Plan that was produced by Financial Advisory Associates in, in 2016. It is on the town manager's website. Uh, I asked the council chairman if this was the plan he wanted us to uh, take a look at, and he said, that, that is, this is the plan. So what I did was I 
cut out the, just the town hall portion of that plan. And I sent a copy to everybody and I hope they've had a chance to look at it. Um, and I thought we could at least start the discussion about this uh, study of the town hall. So if anybody wants to jump in, just, just shout out or raise your hand uh, and I'll, I'll recognize you. Councilor Steves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it was interesting. I had, didn't get a chance to finish all of it, um, but it was definitely interesting reading a lot of the stuff that we, that we often see going into town hall that we don't really think about, but when it's all put in one place, you have to look at it and go, it's, it's eye-opening, let's put it that way. Um, I thought it was interesting that they described the general condition of town hall as fair, in some, many places, fair to poor. Um, and I thought the, the basement issues they were talking about a whole bunch of stuff down there, especially especially in those side rooms that nobody ever goes into, those old front rooms that is laden with old civil defense stuff from like the 1950s. There's a lot of weird stuff in there. Um, but I, the things that jumped out at me were the fact that they specifically were recommending that we seek engineering services um, of architectural envelopment special, uh, an architectural envelope, uh, envelope specialist um, to evaluate all of the masonry, doors, windows and comprehensive energy and facade survey and repair design. Um, that kind of jumped out at me because that really kind of summarizes a lot of what we're talking about is that particular issue. Um, also, it mentioned, I thought it was interesting, they mentioned that the roof was only 15 years old. I thought that roof was a lot older than that. Yeah. But that seemed odd. Um, 50 would make more sense, but I, I it does say, it does say 15. Um, and it notes that we need and they should be we should be setting aside an annual maintenance budget for that but i don't think we actually have one for that do we i've never seen that in our budget um and the other thing that jumped out at me was um it talked about the fact that if as it quotes falls short on maintaining um, full ada compliance and they recommend recommended a full ada access survey to see where things are going i know we've done a little work on that area um but and that it is, and it specifically states that we do have some, we, we're partially compliant, but we're definitely not fully compliant in there. Um, that was, those are the big things that really jumped out of me. Uh, oh, and also the other thing that one of the things, one of the other elements is that they recommended something that I've seen some of the other towns that I cover for the newspaper doing, which is specifically, they recommend getting rid of some of the backlog of documents that are stored in some of those basement side rooms there. There's a couple of them there. Um, one is an old, it's an old milk office, strangely enough, but it's being used as, t as town clerk storage for all kinds of documents. And I know in um, Oxford, they've just started going through the process of, of weeding through their documents to get rid of stuff that doesn't need to be kept and to scan in some of the other stuff that does. So they don't necessarily have to have a zillion paper copies of things lying around. So that might make some sense, but it's also fairly expensive and time consuming to do. So if we want to do something like that, we would have to seriously think about it and, and figure out how we would fund it. Because it's not cheap. But that's what I had for the moment. Uh, thank you. Councilor jo uh, Chair Jovan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do appreciate the fact that we're sending this up to BBW. Uh, and I, I think this is going to go into the uh, it's great to start the conversation uh, about how we're going to uh, look at all the facilities. Um, and again, we sit back, and this is a study that was done in 2016 that uh, is among those studies that we talked about. So I, I think it's great to get it on the table and say uh, these are some of the issues at the town hall that we need to start to address, um, as well as the other plans that we have. So I, I think the strategy um, would be as a council to work with the town manager on, on those goals and objectives of integrating this study in with the other facilities, uh, DPW type studies that we have um, and, and set some uh, uh, expectations of, of have him analyze that report uh, and provide a, a, an analysis to us as to how to best proceed. I know we've talked about um, or that has been talked about, I believe, the Historic uh, Preservation Act type facts that we can maybe do. Um, so I think this is a, a, a broader discussion that we have to have on how to 
address uh, the needs at the town hall because we did put the one thing that I think former councils had done is based on the uh, former town managers capital plan and if you look at the capital plan not the capital plan but well the capital accounts throughout the budget there were monies put aside for different items to the town hall uh, based on the study but with no uh, plan from the town manager at the time on how to accomplish those goals and for those councils that weren't here two years ago we had a lot of debate i think at the budget time where the former town manager was looking for monies to do windows or i think or whatever and uh, we we found out that there was monies already put aside for a long period of time so personally i think that we have to look towards what capital accounts we have already existing and have the DPW director and the town manager work up throughout that plan and, and maybe take some of the monies that we have if we have to go out to engineering studies based on that plan, give us some recommendations uh, on how to best proceed with the available monies that we've already allocated. Um, I know we've talked about uh, through the plan and Heather, uh, we have that side uh, tank that's underground that that money's been allocated it's just been sitting there for a number of years so how how do we take that plan um and develop target dates to try to accomplish some of the goals so that that's my it's great that it's here on the table i don't think we're going to have any concrete answers within the next 30 to 60 days i see this as a long term um but to keep it on the table so that we continue to look at it and it doesn't get buried again but how do we strategize to make sure that we're making the best decisions um, and the use of the town hall. Is it a viable building for the future or do we have to look at alternatives as well? No different than the town hall, uh, the, the fire station and other buildings. And, and I think that would go into the look at school buildings and reuse of a school building. If one of the buildings came offline, do you uh, and look at student enrollment um, throughout the the community and, and do we need all the schools that we have right now given decline in enrollment do we look at taking school and convert it to a town hall facility so I, I think there's a lot of opportunities here to talk about all our facilities school and town um, and come up with a comprehensive plan on how we're going to address those needs and that's that's my two cents it was a little long-winded but I thank you for the the time and the opportunity <clears throat> Okay, thank you. I'm going to continue to go around to the counselors, but if Heather or uh, the town manager, if you want to jump in at any time, just uh, say so. Go ahead, Councilor or Mr. McCall. Yes, um, Councilor Jovan mentioned uh, historic preservation. Um, you know, I, I know we talked last night about the budget. And certain people expressed some of their feelings during some of the transfers about spending and things. But one thing I think we should have a broader conversation about in this tech context is the Community Preservation Act. Um, it doesn't appear that Southbridge has it. I haven't seen it, so I assume you've never passed it. But that affords the opportunity for communities to put money aside and get matching funds from the state. Uh, for those areas, historic preservation, open space, um, and I think the last one is community housing. And so, you know, we can put money aside every year into those three areas and we can get matching funds from the state. Uh, it's based on a percentage. But that, if we're going to continue to look at projects, and, you know, I've heard people talk about preserving outdoor space, recreation, community housing, and historic preservation. We have a lot of historic buildings, as you saw last night, the average age of some of our buildings is. Um, over 69 years old, the fire station building, depending upon if we build a new one, what will we do with that old building and what renovations would need to be done to that if we want to keep it, rent it. Um, the town hall, the library is uh, an older building. A lot of them have historic significance. So we can look at grant monies, but the, the Community Preservation Act is, is a way that as the town puts money aside, you get matching funds when you want to do these. So. It's something that we may want to consider um, looking at. If we're going to be spending this money in the future, if we put it aside, at least we'll get some matching funds. Um, one of the things that I, I did look 
there's a spreadsheet in the back of the section of the uh, facilities management plan. That there's actually a spreadsheet for almost every section that I saw. And they have some numbers in there. Those being five years old, I'm skeptical about how good those are. So as we look and prioritize, we may have to get updated cost estimates. I did look around um, a couple of towns that have done renovations in the last couple of years, and they may have done more complete renovations, but the dollar uh, or the price tag associated with some of those renovations was considerably higher than what FAA has here. Uh, late last year, uh, the Marblehead Town Hall caught my eye because it's a similar period and similar style architecture, and they spent close to eight million dollars. So did Topsfield, and so did a couple other communities to do a thorough renovation. I know we're looking at targeted areas, but I, I think the costs may look, be a bit higher, and that's something that we'll have to consider as we do these and prioritize them. And that's all I have at the moment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dow. Did you want to add anything? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. For you, thank you. Uh, I was I was uh, shocked seeing uh, <clears throat> the town hall need all these work and all these years nobody uh, did any uh, uh, move or any uh, progress to start at least you know uh, you know now we're looking on the whole uh, the building and it's a lot of money but. I understand we have to, the way Mr. McCall say, we have to look where we're gonna get the fun and put money on the side. But I don't like to see uh, working and get everything studies and then we'll put it on a shelf again for another 10 years or five years or 20 years. Uh, I like to see uh, progress. It doesn't matter if we do window this year, next year, uh, something else but we need to start uh, working on it we can't just keep moving thing and, and and say it's a lot of money we can't get the money we can't uh, and this is what it's happened in the past we say the same thing there's a lot of money we don't have the money we're going to spend it somewhere else but the town hall is the brain of the whole town uh, you know we we focus on different places maybe they can wait but the main thing is the town hall everything happened here the tax, the employee, the meeting, the, uh, I mean, you can have a brand new uh, hand, but uh, affected brain, so how are you gonna use the brand new hand? Uh, example, like, uh, I, I, I think the town hall is the brain of the town, and it should be maintained number one. It should be the priority of everything in town, and then you move forward from here. So I hope uh, everybody uh, be aggressive on, on, on the building, it's a beautiful building, uh, and we let it, it, it slowly, it's, it's falling apart. Nobody's looking at a, a different thing. And, and we did look maybe the, the previous council and, and they put it on a shelf, you know, like, I'd like to see something is already happening here, uh, this year, before next year. Uh, we have the money for the window. Start with the window. We have the money for uh, different things. Uh, Heather, uh, uh, Mr. Javan, he say, Council Javan, he say, if some money was transferred for the window. Uh, was we have $30,000 to do an engineering study. Start on a work with them. Start a using them. It doesn't help in the, in the saving. It doesn't help in the account. Let's nope. put them out there. We, what? We, I, I, I agree. We can go out and get quotes from an engineer um, to attempt to, for, for an evaluation in the windows of what we should go forward. Um, however, I don't know that it wouldn't be better suited for us to look at the whole building envelope and do an evaluation of the whole building as it was recommended in the report, which would be more money than what we currently have set aside. I also do want to say, we have been using this document as a tool. It is the guiding document that I have been using when for my facilities, for water, sewer, DPW, and even in this current budget cycle, I did use it as the tool for suggestions at the town hall in the RMB. Um, 
of what we needed for capital and what we need to put in. We have been utilizing the existing cap accounts. We've updated multiple splits, which um, AC splits in different locations based on the recommendations and because of they have been failing, we have been finding them failing. Um, the collector's office, the AC split has been updated. The accounting office, the AC split had been updated. The economic development has a new AC split. Economic development was redone based on the capital plan last year. All the painting in the town hall that we just did this year is part of the recommendations that were in that plan. Um, I, I, I guess one way of saying it is we're trying to pick off some of the low hanging fruit that can make an impact on a day to day basis that we can handle internally without having to go out for contracts and quotes. Because as soon as we start making that effort and um, it's very time consuming to go through all that effort. Um, so it's much, you know, we hit, when we can utilize our own staff to do work, we get a lot more bang for our buck and a lot more work done. Um, so we are trying to move forward. There are there is some money set aside for carpet replacement. Um, I would look to see if we can get quotes from different carpet places to see if we can replace some of those carpets. It's the small things. In addition to the small things, we have replaced the boiler. We have replaced the control systems for the AC. Those were two big items that were in that plan. So we're not just looking at the little items. We used our green community's money to address both of those, um, which I think you know is, a, is an investment into the future. I do think we should be looking at, I'm sorry, the planes are going overhead here. Uh, using this as a tool in the future and i think we need to make a commitment but i do like um counselor steve's approach of like they said in the report maybe we need to have somebody holistically evaluate the exterior of the building um from windows and pointing and roof and everything in complete building envelope and maybe at that point as part of that evaluation and what needs to be done we ask them to split it into smaller projects because obviously windows and roofs aren't done by the same people. We can do it as two separate projects, but if we already have the bid specs and the design on hand, we can do that. We have a little bit of roofing money for small repairs. I have not been able to get anybody to come out and give me quotes on doing slate roof repairs without paying them to go up there and evaluate. Um, we, counselor, Jovan talks about the handicap ramp and the removal of the heating tank. I had a conversation today with Mr. McCall about some of the complications that we're looking into there and we're going to follow up there. Um, as soon as we start touching that handicap ramp, we have to make provisions for accessibility during construction unless we get a waiver. So we need to look into that because just the rental of the ramp and installation of a temporary ramp somewhere could be quite costly. So by the time we start ramp, you know, one thing leads to another. Sometimes we have to pick off the low hanging fruit and uh, you know, the, the facilities are large projects with large that could eat up all of my time if we just try to address them. I don't, I'm not blaming anybody, but I'm looking at those pictures. It's disappointing. The small thing, if it was done at the same time when they need it, we wouldn't get to that point with the town building. It will be already, uh, some issue was already fixed, but we, we're not looking on anything. We just leave it, you know. And I think you guys know about all this stuff before, and nobody did any any progress to fix those small thing it will cause more problem leak and uh, join uh, the, the cement coming out uh, uh, it's a window a gap uh, it's small thing if, if like how I say I understand now we have a lot of problem but from the beginning if somebody will focus and inspect those building uh, 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 maybe yearly and, and then we see what I need and we fix them when I need it, we wouldn't get to this point. And, and now we're looking, we need a lot of money, we, we, we need, we need, we need.
need. And I, again, I hope this is, doesn't sit on the side and nobody move forward in the future. Uh, I, I, I like to see some work start already. I don't know. This is me. I'm the guy. <laughs> I like to see work, work done. Uh, you know, the, the, the energy we have, oh, we see it, but we don't have the money. Where are we going to get the money? We have to spend it somewhere else first. I think this is a wrong, uh, uh, I believe this is a wrong uh, attitude, I want to call it like that, but uh, I think time to start a fix in the town hall. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Dow. Councilor Catrona, do you have anything? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of quick comments. Um, I think this is a great exercise. Thank you for bringing this forward as we also began talking about the facilities management study also coming up. This is, this is a good beginning. Uh, it's eye-opening and um, uh, I think it's good forward thinking as we go. You know, one of the first things that, that stood out to me and that I look at when I take a look at a report like this or an engineering study, um, are we up to code? And when I look at some of, the, some of the code deficiencies and some of the code concerns, I guess I, I, I ask the question, this report has been on the shelf for a few years, do we take a look at the code concerns? And my intent is not to say what are we doing or why are we pointing a finger, but it says that the, the, the fire suppression system um, and the fire detection system exists, but it's not complete and it's code required for the code required coverage. And something as simplistic as exit signs, it shows as a deficiency as well and, and a code concern. Um, I know you can purchase exit signs on Granger for under 50 bucks. We have an in-house electrician. Why don't we just work in knocking some of these things off one at a time. If this is what the report is suggesting or take a walk through town hall and see where those exit signs need to be placed um, or take a look at something as simple as the fire system. And um, you know, I know there's electrical concerns there as well, um, but those are just a couple of my quick statements. I also believe um, I heard the town manager and Councillor Steves I think looking at this as a whole, it's, it's a very good beginning. It's, it's a good exercise uh, as we start to pull some of these off the shelf and, and, and see what our needs are going forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilor Katrona. Councilor Daniel, did you have anything? No, nope. Councilor Daniel. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilor Adams? Yeah, yeah thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, I appreciate that. Sorry I'm on the phone, uh, busy day. Hey. Um, I, you know, I appreciate all the kind words of, uh, of wisdom on this historical building and, and some of these other things. Um, and I appreciate the thoughtfulness of this even coming forward. But I would really hate to see that we ask DPW, the town manager, to do all this work. I'm not ready to open up the checkbook to pay for all this work. So it's great to have this conversation. But if we're not willing to pay for these great things, I think it's just a waste of time for our department head and our town manager to look forward to. So uh, I just hope that the town council can stomach the cost of what it may cost to redevelop and rebuild our town hall and some of these other facilities that uh, so sorely need it. So I, I, just, I just don't really want to waste their time if we're not going to actually put our money where our mouth is at at this point in time. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Councilor Adams. Um, does, if, if no one has anything else, I'm just going to say a few things about the study that I looked at. Um, I read over the study. Town Hall built in 1888, so it is older than the fire station. And some of the highlights that I, I looked at was uh, they recommend First of all, they recommend doing an engineering study on the town hall, um, I don't, and I don't know how much that would cost. Uh, they meant, um, recommend um, 
consolidating facility managements. I noticed that uh, putting them all under the DPW. Um, there are uh, some of the problems that I saw to me, it was, I, I agree with Councilor Dow, it was very shocking. Uh, some of the mold and the dirt floors. Uh, there's a bathroom that was never decommissioned. Uh, to me, if there, it says there's poor airflow in the basement, and I would say that that's something that we need to address, especially in these days. Uh, the fact that there's a, some sort of a vent chase uh, in the brick facade, I think, that could be is illegal under current code and uh, is a fire hazard. So there's a, I don't want to get too detailed here. I, I know that we're not going to be able to solve everything tonight. It's just uh, I thought we should put it on and start the discussion. I know the town manager's very busy with the uh, budget right now, and this is probably going to take a lot of work to, to take a look at all this. Um, they talk about the, uh, the, the windows are a big problem. Some of the windows are boarded up and are allowing animals into the town hall. Um, a lot of the air conditioning, the air conditioning is all kind of a helter-skelter set up here in the town hall, and a lot of them are leaking water and ruining the brick facade. A lot of the, according to this, a lot of the caulking in the, in the windows are, are made of as asbestos material. Um, all of the equipment of the, the heating and the air conditioning is near, near the end of life, according to this. Um, the interior, they said, was pretty f good to fair, but it does need a lot of refinishing and cleaning and painting. The electrical was f fair to poor. Uh, there were wiring, limited wiring throughout the building, limited outlets, shorts in some of the sockets. There were some concern with shorts in the sockets. Uh, so they, they recommended re repairing and rewiring. Uh, but, you know, I do understand that this would be quite quite uh, costly. I think the overall, the immediate repair was about two million and the overall repair is about three million. And where we would come up with that money and <laughs> is uh, something we'd have to really uh, think about heavily. So I just wanted to start the, the conversation. We're not going to do it all tonight. Didn't expect to get that way, but it's a good beginning anyway. So thank you for taking the time to listen. Did you, if you have anything to add, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll just move on. All right, thank you. So there's no new business tonight on the agenda. So unless somebody has something and they want to add it, I'll allow it. I don't have any new business. Councilor Dow? No, thank no. you. All right. So I'll have accept a meeting to uh, a I motion to adjourn. Thank you. Councilor Dow? So I have recognized, Councilor Marchetti. Oh, sorry. Councilor Jovan? No, Heather, uh, DPW okay. Director I'm, Heather is looking sorry. to be I just had a quick update that of what we, there was discussion last night regarding the two lights at Dunkin' Donuts. I wanted just to let you know what I had done today to try to find out some more information about that. Um, I actually was contacted by um, a former employee that informed me that he believed that those lights at Dunkin' Donuts were put in by Dun during when Dunkin' Donuts redeveloped the flat location as a requirement of their site plan, and that they informed the planner at the time, Mrs. Ackley, that they would put the lights in, but they would not put power to them. So, which is kind of in agreement of the stories that I have heard previously um, regarding those lights. So I have asked Eric to see if he can find that site plan review, because um, I didn't have it. Um, also the one for Rite Aid or Walgreens, former Rite Aid where Walgreens is now, um, the lights there I believe were also put in for the same reasons um, with their site plan review. In addition, in the 80s is when the sidewalks and the other lights had went in um, under a CDBG program, I believe, and I'm hoping that CDBG can find the, those plans because DPW doesn't have those. Um, they would be helpful to be able to determine if there was ever any conduits planned for that area, but my assumption is based on those conversations that they probably aren't connected to the other locations. Um, I have done a, some, a quick research on potential solar 
options. It would obviously require us to put solar panels on those lights, which would make them look a little bit different, but it would allow the lights to be lit. Um, but I will say also this, there was some comments of, well, why don't we just take them down if they're not gonna light? Even if they don't light, they do provide what, during the daytime that decorative appearance of, of, of the lights and of consistency with the light. And I don't know that, you know, since the investment has been made to put them there, that it isn't work, worth having that decorative appearance even just during the day to say it has quaint, pretty lights going down the street here on Main Street. Um, I'm hoping that between all the research that I'm trying to do, we can come up with a solution, but ripping out hundreds of feet of sidewalk to be replaced to put conduits in and um, having the cost of running the conduits and running the electric power, I don't see it being cost-effective use of our money versus solar, which might be costly up front to put something in, but it will be far less of just from a construction standpoint. Um, I can go ahead and ask the contractor to give me an idea of what he thinks the cost would be as a rough budget estimate. I have the sidewalk replacement cost. I can do that if I have an idea of where we're running it from, but we don't have the conduit and things of that nature in the contract to estimate. So I just wanted to let you know that I it, it's not lost on me. Um, and some people have reached out from watching the meeting last night, like I said, to to kind of confirm what I already believed is that it was done by Dunkin' Donuts. It is on town property, it was probably done for the town, but I think Dunkin' Donuts basically said, we're not gonna put the power to the lights. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions to, for that? Nothing, all right. Then I'll accept the meeting to adjourn. So moved. Second. Roll call, Councilor Dow? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. And I'm a yes, thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you, thank Heather. You. Thank you, Mr. McCall.